to him. He wanted humans to be the best and give his best religion to him. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين My dear viewers Welcome once again to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious. As you all know, that after we finished the beautiful series of Riyad al-Salihin, which is compiled by Imam Nawawi in over, 100, uh, over 700 episodes, uh, MashaAllah, we started a new series of explaining the marvelous collection of Imam al-Bukhari, which is known as Al-Adab al-Mufrad, or the Prophetic Etiquettes and Manners which is different than his sound collection of Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari. Um, in Al-Adab al-Mufrad, it compiles not only prophetic ahadith, but statements of the companions and sometimes the tabi'een, uh, stemming from the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And some of the collections are not highly sound, some are hasan, some are even uh, da'if, because it is pertaining to good manners and etiquette not pertaining to establishing matters of aqeedah and do's and do not do's uh, and so on. Today's episode is number 109 in the series of the prophetic etiquettes and manners. And uh, we will continue with the chapter of Al-Ayyab, the fault finder, the fault finder. As we spoke last episode about some people who have the habit of uh, being critical of everyone and of everything, of every act. If he, if they see somebody who is generous, they say he's only doing that to show off. If they see somebody who is uh, successful in his business, they say he must be corrupt, he must be a thief. Somebody who's rich, they say he must be through theft and stealing. Uh, see somebody who's going to the masjid uh, on regular basis, say he's, he doesn't have anything to do, he's lousy. And that's why he uh, goes back and forth to the masjid. Uh, whether they see good or bad, nothing they like. Uh, if you remember, I said they even hate themselves. So Al-Ayyab, the fault finders, they never appreciate any good. And if somebody gave them a gift or uh, did them a favor, they don't even appreciate it. Why? They say uh, he, he could have done better. They expect it better, as if it is uh, the right they take it for uh, granted. Such people are ruthless. Such people who do not appreciate anything, rather they always look at the empty half of the cup, are desperate. They live a desperate life, subhanAllah. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, warned us again is this behavior, this attitude, and people who have such attitude. He even guided us that if you see something that you don't like, don't insult, don't curse, don't be abusive and that's why this chapter is about uh, condemning al-ayyab default finder furthermore we spoke about people who look for others faults and mistakes which are hidden and concealed so the messenger of allah addresses him oh people who only accepted islam by their tongue Iman has not settled in the hearts yet. that's why they behave like that la tattabi'u awratil muslimina do not look for the faults and the errors of Muslims. Do not fetch for the hidden things about Muslims. So indeed, whoever does so, the Almighty Allah will reveal his faults, expose him and his errors, even if he's hiding in the privacy of his bedroom. Allah will expose him. Subhanallah. We only have one hadith left in this chapter, which is narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu an, an in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, laysa al-mu'minu bil-ta'ani wal al-la'ani wal al-fahishi wal al-badhi. Allah, subhanallah, you know what? I just simply love this collection. And it helped me personally a great deal. Even though many of these hadith were studied before, 
also at Riyadh al-Salihin and in the books of Riqaq, tendering the hearts and so on. Here Abdullah ibn Mas'ud in hadith number 332 narrated that the messenger of Allah may the greatest peace and blessings be upon him said the believer is neither a defamer nor a cursor nor outrageous nor obscene Bazi. Subhanallah watch what you say watch what you say as long as you keep the word inside of your mouth you own it the moment you utter it it owns you and it is impossible to take it back many counseling sessions i counsel people sometimes in divorce matters and they say i regretted what i said i wish i didn't say it or when the wife dares to say to the husband, you're not man enough. If you're man enough, give me divorce. I want out. So out of anger, and he thinks he's been humiliated, and he wants to take revenge. He says, you're divorced. And he says, I regret it. I didn't want to say it. I never contemplated divorce. And she also, in the same meeting, she says, that I regretted that I pushed him all the way to say it. So didn't you ask him for divorce? Yes, but I never thought he would divorce me. You know, I thought he loves me. I thought I'm going to tease him. I'm threatening him. I never expected him to say it. It's just a word, a word. This word can destroy people's lives. Absolutely. I know somebody who wanted to take his life to commit suicide because he divorced his wife whom he loves dearly and she loves dearly. Then afterward when he couldn't take her back, he wanted to take his life. He attempted to take his life. Add to that when there are children hanging in between and custody. Subhanallah, you were a loving couple. Problems happen all the time. It happened even in the life of Prophet Muhammad between him and his spouses and his wives. No one in this life lives, uh, you know, a life without problems, without trials, without obstacles, without hindrances, without, uh, you know, tests. Uh, this is what we call it, Sunnatul Haya. This is part of the life. This is part of the deal. Uh, you wouldn't enjoy it unless that there is ups and downs, good and bad, tests and trials, reward and tests, and so on. So the moment, the moment you want to open your mouth and say, yeah, somebody says to his wife a terrible word, he, he, which would be only said to a prostitute. How dare? I didn't mean it. Or she would say to her husband a word that no chess woman would ever utter. How dare? Well, I didn't know what I was saying. Accordingly, he got angry and he divorced her. Subhanallah. Uh, cursing each other. When we're driving, especially in, in the Arabic countries, not only in the Arabic countries, in many countries, in Pakistan, in India, in Bangladesh, in Egypt, in Jordan, in Syria, in Lebanon, take it easy, take it easy. You keep honking because the driver ahead of you is slow. You're exiting from the parking lot or entering. And the, the, the driver who's driving the vehicle in front of you is slow, doesn't know where to draw the ticket. So you say awful words, you, you say the F word, you say the B word, you say a lot of bad stuff. Then after you keep honking and cursing, when you come across, you find the person is senior citizen or the lady with heavy glasses and she is like 80, 85 years old. Thank God that she is able to drive. Then you regret. You know why you regret? If you don't regret, you're not even human and you don't deserve to be human why do you regret because how old are you now young man i'm 20 
still have a uh, long way ahead of me, long life ahead of me. Well, if you live such long life until you're 80 or 85, you certainly gonna be in the same position. Start losing some of your senses and ability, maybe even have some disability, hardship in difficulty in moving and speaking and seeing things clearly, uh, you know, you become slow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is Allah who created you from da'af in, in one dalek da'af. ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة. So after weakness, here is a curve on the ground zero. Weakness, tender, baby, child. Then strength until you grow up, until you become fully muscular, fully grown up. Okay. ثم من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبة. Then after full strength. Back again to weakness and senility. Ah, oh, subhanallah al -azim. So your turn is coming. Your turn is coming. Only then you remember how often you used to curse elders because they were slow crossing the street as pedestrians or driving in a vehicle ahead of you or, uh, you know, taking their time before they step on the escalator. I hear that. Sometimes people in Mecca and Medina, they say things like that. People with disability, you don't know what is wrong with them. Be patient, take your time. You know, nothing is gonna happen before the time that Allah has ordained for that thing to happen. Slow down, think about the reality of life. And if you curse such people or criticize them or condemn them for being slow, the day soon will come and you'll be in your position and you'll be cursed by immature guy or girl like that. And then you remember, you're all wrong, man. You're all wrong. Whatever you've done to people, you will be treated the same. Whether you've done it to your parents, to your relatives, or to people in the street, so be careful. If you're a true believer, then a believer is neither defamer or a curser or outrageous nor obscene. Why a believer is not like that? Because Allah hates, Allah abhors the person who is a defamer, curser, and uh, pronounces obscene words. May Allah guide us to what is best. So the question is, what, what shall I do with regards to the past terrible incidents? I used to be really terrible and uh, my tongue was always cursing. The Almighty Allah says, Meaning, indeed, the good deeds remove, remit, blow away the bad deeds. So you need to balance what you've done of wrong with good deeds. The beginning of the ayah of Surah 2, chapter number 11, I believe, verse number 114, the Almighty says, الليل, Oh, so not only establish the prayers, now I'm going to pray the Sunnah before and after. I'm going to fast a lot, as much as I can. I'm going to give in a charity. I'm going to be helpful to people. And particularly those whom I defamed or I cursed or I spoke in an obscene way to them, I have to be apologetic. I have to apologize to them. I have to honor them. Well, you want to be forgiven or you don't? If you don't want to be forgiven, do as you wish. You will be treated the same. ما يرفض من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. Don't you think when you lower your window and you say the F word to me or to somebody, you know, in front of my wife and my kids, well, I'm capable to get off the car, cut you off, and slit your throat. You know? In the States, I drive and I have my shotgun with me and I have, I'm equipped. I can deal with you the same way. You know, 
You like it this way, I can deal with you the same way. Well, subhanallah, when somebody insults me and I say, astaghfirullah, and I let go, I find a lot of peace, a lot of tranquility, a lot of serenity in my heart because I believe this person is foolish and I believe he is so weak. Who is the weakest? The person who couldn't control his temper, couldn't control the word that comes out of his mouth. ليس الشديد بالسرعة ولكن الشديد من يملك نفسه عند الغضب. Who is the most powerful of people? Not the one who can overcome people. Not Mike Tyson. Not the person who wrestles and beats others, boxes and beats others. Not the person who can control his temper while he's able to take an action. That is the actual strength. That is the real test. May the Almighty Allah guide us to follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When this Badwin grabs him from his collar and he was wearing like a scarf of wool, it left red marks around the neck of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hey Muhammad, give me He's asking for charity. He's asking for help. And he's asking rudely. And did the Prophet ﷺ went to Umar ibn Khattab or to Khalid ibn Walid to chop off his head or to teach him a lesson or to hang him upside down or to skin him off alive like uh, many rulers do nowadays, Muslim rulers do. No, he smiles and he gives him. Wasn't he able to take revenge? Yes, indeed. Most definitely. Weren't any of his companions capable to teach him a lesson? But they wouldn't, as long as the Prophet ﷺ is quiet and didn't ask any of them to take an action. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now with a new chapter, which is Babu Tamaduh. Subhanallah, that is the opposite of what we're talking about. So we say, ليس المؤمن بالفاحش ولا البذي أنا ولا بالطعان ولا باللعان And now we'll talk about, uh, you know, condemning, praising people excessively. Praising people excessively. Let's see why such thing is being condemned. Let's see. Hadith number 333. عن أبي بكرة أي نفيع بن الحارث may الله be pleased with him أن رجلا ذكر عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأثنى عليه رجل خيرا فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ويحك قطعت عنق صاحبك يقوله مرارا إن كان أحدكم مادحا لا محالة فليقل أحسب كذا وكذا إن كان يرى أنه كذلك وحسيبه الله ولا يزكي على الله أحدا Look at the perfect balance In this hadith you learn how to be fair and unbiased whether in praising or dispraising in admiring or discrediting it's, it's all about balance in Islam and moderation. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا وَكَذَلِكَ And thus we've made you أُمَّةً وَسَطًا just nation, just in everything. Why? لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ In order to be witnesses over people. Then وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا And who will be a witness over you? The Messenger of Allah. May the greatest peace and blessings be upon him. So what did Abu Bakr narrate? Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that a man was mentioned in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. Some 
one who was there happened to praise him. So the Messenger of Allah, may the greatest peace and blessings be upon him, said, Woe to you, waylak, waylak, woe to you. You've slit his neck, his throat, you cut off his head, you cut off the head of your companion, you slit his throat, that is, qata'ta unuqahu. And he repeated that several times to emphasize that what he has just done was terrible thing. Then he went on saying, if one of you must praise someone, he should say, well, I consider that so and so is such and such. Allah is the one who will take account of him if he thinks that he is indeed like that. No one can appropriate Allah's right to attest to someone's character. What is this? What is this? Amazing balance. Perfect balance. Subhanallah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sitting and somebody prays someone, said, MashaAllah, so and so, wallahi, but he said it in his presence, not in his absence. <clears throat> He is the most righteous of people. He is the most honest. He is the most generous. Blah, blah, blah. Excessively. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Why hak qata'ta unuqa sahibik? This is the unuq, the neck. Qata'ta, you slit his throat. Why? Excessively praising some people may spoil them. May make them think good <clears throat> of themselves more than they deserve may tempt them to show off and they never actually intended that in the beginning but because of what you did and that's why it's okay when you attend an episode or you hear a lecture or you attend a Friday sermon or you listen to a citation of a Qari in the Quran and say MashaAllah Shaykh may Allah bless you I enjoyed it so much I benefited so much out of it may Allah reward you Balanced. You go to a speaker, Sheikh, I'm a big fan of you. I was dying to see you. A dream came true. You're the best. I've listened to all the shiuch. You're the best. I've listened to all the speakers. You're the best. I've never seen anyone in my life is like that. You're like the companion. Oh, wait a minute, man. Stop it. You're spoiling the person. You're ruining his intention. And that's why he said, Qata'ata unuqa sahibik. You slit his throat. Don't do that. It is very serious. Admiring or discrediting people is a very serious matter. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Okay. And we'll see some more coming hadith to learn. Because do you know the unseen? You know, you've seen this person, mashallah, reasonable, good, uh, lower in his gaze, clean, you have seen him a few times charitable. You know, you witnessed him fasting maybe uh, Monday or Thursday or whatever. That's it. You form an idea that this person is super righteous. There's something called privacy. And you don't know what he does in private. Right? You don't know how he deals with his family. In fact, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Ahsanukum, khayrukum, خيركم لأهله وأنا خيركم لأهلي. In one hadith, he said the best of you are the best of manners, who have the best of manners. In another hadith, he said the best of all of you, when it comes to manners, is one who is best to his wife. And I'm the best of all of you to my wives. This is what the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said. So now, what really counts is not what you see outside. What really counts is how this person deals with his parents with his siblings, with his spouse, with his children, with his neighbors. When all those people say, MashaAllah, he's a good person, then seriously, he's a good person. But at work, in the transportations, uh, when he's dealing with people outside or in the masjid, is this sufficient to make a judgment? Absolutely not. 
and that's why the wise man Umar bin Khattab al muhaddath may Allah be pleased with him in a separate incident when he heard two people talking and one was making a recommendation of a third saying that he is honest he is such and such you can do business with him you can trust him so Umar bin Khattab intervened because he is a genuine student of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu so he said to the man who is admiring a third person he said do you know him? He said, yes, of course, I know him very well. He said, how do you know him? He said, did you travel with him? He said, no, we didn't have a chance to travel. Traveling, not you know, traveling, uh, you know, uh, uh, for a short distance, going from London to Cardiff, from Cardiff to Leicester, or from Houston to Victoria, or from uh, Houston to Dallas. No, we're talking about those people who used to travel from Mecca to Asham, one month journey on the back of camels, plenty of time in order to get to know one another at the time of ease, at the time of anger, at the time of khidmah. Who is selfish, who is very cooperative, who appreciates others, who is helpful, and so on. He said, did you travel with him? He said, no, I didn't have a chance. He said, are you neighbors? He said, no, he's not my neighbor. He said, uh, did you do business with him? trade and money and he said no not that either he said then uh, you must have seen him going to the masjid regularly and that's why you admire him he said exactly he said then you don't know him I suppose when I come to the masjid I, I, I'm going to behave everyone comes to the masjid is going to behave somebody comes out of the masjid he goes home he beats his wife he's abusive and you hear him, his neighbors hear him, very abusive, very uh, insultive. So who figure that out? His wife, his kids, his family, his neighbors. You're not a neighbor. You're not a family member. People come to me for disputes. I sort out disputes in business. When I'm giving the khutbah in Jumu'ah, I see them sitting in the first row. Big beards, mashallah, sometimes turban. So and so is a big contractor, so and so is a big merchant, and they merge business together. You know, we're talking about tens of millions, and sometimes hundreds of millions. Now they have a financial dispute. Sheikh Muhammad, can you come and sit with us? Uh, no problem. Those are good people, as I assume. Only then you will find out who is good and who is ruthless, who is selfish. Who is a faker? Coming to the masjid on a regular basis and growing a beard and wearing chua, kameez, or wearing a thobe does not constitute enough evidence to judge that this person is righteous. You got it? Brothers and sisters, you got it? If somebody is proposing to a girl and they came to ask you about this guy, you say, I know him very well. MashaAllah, I see him every day in the masjid. Then what? I don't know anything about him. Say that. When you say I don't know, and I, you say only what you know, that's fair enough. But when you give a full testimony, you verify the authenticity of this person. And if it is my daughter, I would be more than happy to give her to him in marriage. And 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 this is unfair because wallahi you don't know him. What constitutes a fair judgment? Being a family member, you know him inside, outside. Or being a neighbor, you know, a person cannot hide for so long. Huh? Every day when he is leaving the house, when he's coming to the house, whether he greets his neighbors or not, how he treats them. Uh, you know, they fight over the parking spot. Uh, is he abusive? Is he cursors? Is he smiling? Is he always frowning? All business and trade. A lot of people whom I used to appreciate by the look. When I happen to judge between them and their opponents, when it comes to business and finance, Wallahi, they lost every respect in my eyes. I figured that, you know, coming to the mission and praying is camouflage. Just business. The true judgment is when you see people dealing with each other, with a currency, with money, with business, with finance, then you find out whether this person is genuine or not. Marriage and divorce, likewise.
It's a long matter that we'll talk about it, inshallah. But we ran out of time for this segment. We want to continue uh, with the hadith when we return back, inshallah. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back my dear viewers to the second segment of Gardens of the Pious live all the way from our studio in Cairo, Egypt. Our phone numbers are shown right now on the bottom of your screen. Feel free to pick up the phone and dial any of the following numbers in order to connect with us and present your questions. Tamara from the USA, Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Huda TV. Go ahead, Tamara. Okay. Um, do you want me to go through the question or repeat the message that I sent? Well, I haven't received any message yet. You can go ahead with your question, with your message as you wish. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I just need some fatwa and advice. I live in the United States. I live in California specifically. I just uh, got a, um, an opportunity, job opportunity to do it, to work as a financial planner. Um, and uh, basically this financial planner works uh, um, uh, in, a, in, a, in the industry of insurance companies and stuff like that. So they do provide planning, uh, life planning for, for their customers, how to manage their life, how to manage their uh, assets how much to, how they can control their taxes. Uh, part of the the job that I have is uh, uh, issuing uh, life insurance, uh, long-term insurance, medical insurance, and stuff like that. So uh, it gradually, this can be upgraded to become um, advisor, a financial advisor, what that includes uh, to have uh, you know, like do the stock market and stuff like that and do like different type of level of investment. Uh, so my question is to know like what's the shara say about it? Because as you know, like in the United States, so we have so much everything commingle and I'm not too clear on that. And but at the same time, I want to have a clear you, conscience. Uh, yeah. Tamara, mashallah, let me ask you a couple questions. Question okay. number one. What is your perspective on life insurance? What do you think of it? Um, my understanding from life insurance is basically if the person to to this to pass to uh, provide uh, some. Tamara, are you there? Tamara, I know you're still on the line. Well, I would assume uh, you can hear me. And if you can, you can just hang up and uh, listen to the answer. You presented your question beautifully, mashallah. Uh, in fiqh, they say, al-hukmu al faru'an an tasawwurihi. In order to pass a judgment, you have to know what you're talking about and imagine the case. So when you say, can I work as a financial advisor? I'm going to ask you, what does it entail? So you say, life planners, and that can go up to, you know, uh, recommending, advising, arranging life insurance, medical insurance, automobile insurance, house insurance, uh, also investment in the stock market, uh, including halal and haram. It's all about which investment is more profitable? Let it be wine company, let it be any kind of product, let it be including interest or riba or buying uh, uh, CDs out of the bank or whatever with a high interest. So if you're advising your clients to invest in something which is lawful number one, then according to your profession profitable, this is halal. 
and I have some clients and some viewers and some followers who are doing very well in this field and in this regard. There are a lot of people, either doctors or whatever in, era, in any profession, who've got wealth and they don't know how to manage it. They need somebody like you. And they are very keen to invest in halal. So, mashallah, working as a financial advisor for them is a win-win situation. They profit and they profit. If you have the experience where to invest, in which fund, which stocks to buy, halal uh, components, halal uh, stocks, uh, with their money, not taking uh, loans with interest, then mashallah, this is good. But Sister Tamara, life insurance is absolutely forbidden. And it is 100% gambling. And as you know, and this is no secret, most of the homicides that happens in the U.S., the first suspect is the spouse. Why? They look into number one, whether the victim had life insurance policy or not and how much. Then they suspect the living spouse. And most of the time, they're right. Uh, somebody buys a life insurance policy, they make the first deposit, then either they take their lives or somebody else will take their lives. It's all by the leave of Allah, of course. And they collect or the heirs will collect one million. How much did they pay? Only one uh, payment, two, three payments, 500 bucks, and you collect one million. What is the difference between this and buying lotto tickets? Uh, in this case, it's pre-planned. You know that you're going to win the one million dollar or if the life insurance is more or less. Yani. So this is 100% agreed upon. General consensus, haram forbidden. Whoever facilitates that is a partner in the perpetration of committing what is forbidden. So if you advise somebody to buy life insurance, it's haram for him and haram for you because you advised him or her. You know, I'm breaking it down and giving you the analogy in order to, not only for Tamara, Tamara and everyone to understand. It's about what do you advise? It's about what do you advise? Some people come to me, they go to um, a non-Muslim psychiatrist, a non-Muslim psychologist. And among the advices, that you need to, like for marital relations and marital problems, you need to do like, you know, couple exchange, you do, you need to try another partner for some time, you need to take a vacation, you need to drink sometimes a little bit, you need to smoke, really. For them, this is the norms. For us, these are all major sins. It will not solve, it will only make it worse and guarantee the person will be punished for that. Terrible fate in this life and the hereafter. Advisor is such a big word, whether financial or family advisor or whatever. So it must be stemming from knowledge and not only knowledge in that profession, but knowledge of the deen of what is halal and haram. Because we as Muslims understand that you want to live happy in this life and secure a safe return in the hereafter. Then the verses 123 and so on of Surah Taha Chapter number 20, Allah the Almighty says, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَيَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَ وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Allah says, whoever follows my guidance, فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَ They shall neither go astray nor suffer of any distress in this life. Whoever this regards my guidance, أعرض عن ذكري, put it behind his or her back. فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Their life shall be miserable. And then in the year after, they will be resurrected blind. Why? Because they neglected the Almighty's guidance. You want to be successful? Follow Allah's guidance and His Messenger's guidance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Life insurance, haram, absolutely. Bank interest, haram, absolutely. So when you work in this position, if you have the power to be selective, to work on what is lawful only, alhamdulillah. If not, if you don't have the choice, then no, it is not permissible. 
May Allah make it easy for you and give you the best choice for you in this life and in the hereafter. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abdul Rauf from the case say welcome to Huda TV. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Say, uh, control room basically complained to me that you have not called us from a long time. My apologies for that and sincere apologies for that. In fact, uh, but I'm you, listening you, to the program every now and then. Abdul Rauf, you used to call like 10 years ago. Aren't you the one uh, who moved to Medina after some years? I moved to Jeddah that time, then I came back to Riyadh now. Alhamdulillah, shukullah. I'm just uh, testing my memory. Uh, I have the same of the Rauf, yeah, exactly. Barakallah. Thank you for remembering me. Alhamdulillah. And so how can I help you, Abdul Rauf? Uh, Sheikh, my mom, uh, I just returned from my holidays and she's not feeling well. I just request you to include her in your dua. May Allah give shifa to my mom and to your mom. May Thank Allah so cure Allah. them okay. and cure everyone who believes in the oneness of Allah and he's not feeling well. May Allah expedite their cure, their shifa. May Allah give them speedy recovery and full shifa. أسأل الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم أن يشفي أمي وأمك بارك الله فيكم. Thank you عبد الرؤوف from the KSC. السلام عليكم. إلي from Singapore. السلام عليكم إلي. Yes. السلام عليكم إلي. How are you? I'm fine. I'm good. You are fine as well, Sheikh. Yes, indeed, uh, I am. Alhamdulillah. How can I help you today? Uh, Sheikh, I just have a question. Uh, so I watch self-help videos on YouTube made by non-Muslims, uh, mainly focusing on like building confidence, overcoming anxiety, and self-esteem. Um, but sometimes they mention things that don't align with Islam. Like they mention like the universe a lot. So like. For example, they'll say you didn't get the job because the universe has something better for you. Of course, like I see this as like as being about Allah, and I'm firm of, uh, in my belief in Tawhid. I only watch for self help advice. So, like, is it permissible to still continue watching such videos? Well, Ellie, I think I was referring to what you just said a couple minutes ago when I said this is what happens uh, when you seek an advice from a person who doesn't believe in God, doesn't have a moral code, and so on. Obviously, not every advice is wrong, but as Muslims, al-hikmatu dalatul mu'min. We're looking for wisdom, even if it is fine with non-Muslims. No problem. No problem. But any advice that contradicts, as you just said, not in line with our Islamic teachings, it should be disregarded. And I'm sure there are professional Muslims who have on their websites and on their YouTube channels and social media much better way and advices that you can follow. For instance, Dr. Hala Banani out of Dallas, uh, Texas, USA, and she's been also a presenter on Hoda TV. And she has her page and YouTube channel and Facebook page. So that is very beneficial. Uh, you can follow without having to uh, experience a hard time trying to find what is right and what is wrong in taking advices from these websites that you say that most of the time they are not in line with the Islamic guidance. Barakallah fikum Ali from Singapore. Ziba from India. Assalamu alaikum, Ziba. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, my question is, what is the correct way in which a man can divorce a woman? Uh, in which a man can divorce his wife? The first verse of Surah At-Talaq. You know, there is an entire chapter in the Quran. It's called Surah At-Talaq, Divorce. And there is also a set of verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. The first verse in Surah Al-Talaq, the Almighty Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nabiyyu, O the Prophet, إِذَا طَلَّقَتُمُ النِّسَاءَ 
فطلقوهن لعدتهن وأحصوا العدة واتقوا الله ربكم. So Allah is teaching the man, the husband, how to divorce a wife. And the Prophet ﷺ made it easy for us and explain. A man shouldn't divorce his wife when she is in her menses. That is the meaning of the first verse of Surah Al-Talaq. Nor should he divorce his wife after the menses if she and him happen to get intimate. Why? Because number one, that will prolong the idda, the waiting period, if he was planning to divorce either way. And she might conceive, if it is possible for her to conceive, and that will make the idda nine months until she gives birth. It will be really problematic. فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ وَأَحْصُوا الْعِدَّةِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ And Allah warns, this is the right way to give divorce. If she is in her menses, another reason why a husband shouldn't divorce his wife. During the menses, there is a great deal of hormonal imbalance and disturbance. So she might have a little bit of temper. She might not be in the mood. They call it PMS. So take it easy. Help her out. Watch the latest episode of the sexual rights that Mufti Mink, Wahid Ibrahim and myself have presented a couple of weeks ago or so. Very useful in this regard. Very useful in this regard. Watch the program of Fiqh of Love. And there is a couple of episodes by the end about divorce. What is the right time to divorce? When to divorce? And divorce should not be done during the time of anger. Should be contemplated, talked about it, then agreed upon it. Everyone knows their rights, their duties. And if there are children in between, how are we going to raise them? We have a full agreement. Then Allah said, وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ You should not forget the good things between you. He said, فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ معروف and إِحْسَانٍ Both are kindness. إِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ If you decide to resume the relationship, then I'll shift delete, start from the scratch, treat each other honorably. If you finally come to an agreement that divorce is the ultimate solution, it doesn't mean we become enemies. No, we shouldn't become enemies. If we don't have children, the relationship would dissolve after the idda, alhamdulillah, like nothing have happened. And she becomes totally stranger and you become a non-mahram to her. If there are children, there is a very solid bond between us we have to maintain, which is looking after our children, whether the custody is with the wife for now, and then it will be transferred to the father after a certain age, the bulu, or whatever kind of deal we come to an, an agreement to. So these are the teachings of divorce to begin with. Allah said to the women, لا يحل لهن أن يكتمن ما في أرحامهن. It is not forbidden. For it is it is forbidden for women to conceal what Allah has created. ما خلق الله في أرحامهن. Which means what Allah has put in their wombs. If she is pregnant, she cannot conceal that or try to get rid of the baby in order to shorten the period or to deceive the man so that he doesn't take her back if the divorce uh, is revocable. Long list of teachings, I try to summarize them. If somebody is really into divorce and they contemplated the idea and they agreed upon it, then call to find out and follow the previous procedures. May Allah make it easy for every couple to reconcile. And if not, divorce is permissible and it is the last resort. We've come to the end of today's edition of Gardens of the Pious and until next episode I leave you all in the care of the Almighty Allah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب لك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.
God is the greatest. The one and only glory to Him. He born in humans to be the best and give His best religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgiving all about Him in paradise, worshiping cows, fire and stones. Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price